Hey there, I'm Allison. Welcome to my channel, Natural Tasty Chef. I'm a natural food chef that specializes in gluten-free, dairy-free, and candida diets. I um, had a personal chef business back in Los Angeles for the last 10 years where I cooked for and coached and gave cooking lessons to people all over. Um, I went to a very unique culinary school that I thought was awesome. It was in Austin, Texas. It was called the Natural Epicarian, and unfortunately it's not there anymore, but the school was very unique where it taught not just how to cook, like how to cut a carrot, for instance, perfectly, but it focused a lot on the healing properties and the energetics of food, which I was just fascinated with. But after culinary school, I ended up coming down with a candida issue myself. So I was able to naturally restore my health with food and supplements and uh, lifestyle changes, and that's what I want to share with you today in this video. Before I jump right in, first let's just talk quickly about what candida actually is. Now, I'm not a doctor, or I'm not a naturopath, I am a um, natural food chef. So the terms I'm using, I'm not gonna be speaking very scientifically, I'm just speaking from my personal experience it, it, with having candida. So candida is a, um, it's basically a yeast overgrowth. So we all have candida, in it, typically in our gut, in our mouth, on our skin, but um, we all have we all have good bacteria and bad bacteria, and usually the combination of the two, they can just live in harmony together. But basically, if the bad bacteria is able to take over, that's when you can start having issues with um, like a candida overgrowth. Now you might be wondering, well, what kills good bacteria? And that is a great question. Um, so some main ones are, well, diet is a big one. Uh, eating a diet that is high in sugar or uh, refined flour or that's highly processed in general. So if you're eating a lot of fast food, um, drinking a lot of alcohol, smoking cigarettes, drug abuse, uh, birth control actually. So like the pill, um, different birth control methods that can also diminish your good bacteria. Swimming in chlorinated water also is one. Uh, if you think about it, your skin actually absorbs what you put on it. So if you're sitting in chlorinated water for long periods of time, that can also contribute to it. High levels of stress uh, is actually a really big one that people don't really think about, but that's why it's really good to incorporate calming uh, techniques like uh, yoga, you know, qigong or meditation. Those are really good for your, actually for your gut health. For me, I believe it was a combination of things. I was highly stressed, so I think that really weakened my immune system. I had been on birth control for a long time, like I wanna say it was about 10 years, maybe more, and I was a strict vegan, and I was um, eating a high sugar, high starch diet. So I first started realizing that I was having some type of issue shortly after culinary school. I was noticing that there was like this stomach bloating. It was like this constant stomach bloating. And it wasn't just like I ate a big meal and my stomach was bloated. It was like I would wake up in the morning and simply drink a glass of water and my stomach would be bloated. Not only that, but I was, uh, I was the chronic fatigue was so bad. Like I was tired all the time. I, um, sometimes I would sleep 14 hours at night and it would feel like that still wasn't enough. And then at the end of my day, I would just be so tired. I remember sitting in my living room feeling like I literally can't walk to my bed. I feel like I may have even done this, like actually crawled to bed. That's how tired I was at night. Um, also the brain fog. I was experiencing brain fog. Um, I'm a very big reader, like I love to read, so I can read books, you know, if it's a good book, I could read it in two, two days, two, three days. This, it's like I couldn't finish a book, so I would like pick up a book, read a couple pages, put it aside. So then I'd think, oh, well maybe I just didn't like that book, so I'd try another book, pick it up, read a couple pages, put it aside, and then finally I think I just gave up on reading. And once I started working with a naturopath who was like, Do, are you experiencing brain fog? And she was like, wow, like that is true, like I literally can't finish a book. Oh, I was also experiencing um, weight gain that was weird because I hadn't really changed my diet at all, so it was just like this weight gain that I couldn't get rid of. Also, my hair, which is normally, um, normally like, thick and has body to it and everything it was really limp and it was thin and it, it was like it was kind of like lifeless like it just it, it changed and I was I was very aware of it like there's something wrong so I was in my early 30s at the time so it was just like this is all kind of weird stuff to be happening that just had these kind of red flags go up like there's something 
something's not right here. Some other symptoms of candida that people sometimes experience are chronic yeast infections. Sometimes people have like a white coating on their tongue. Uh, if you have chronic colds or allergies, irritable bowel syndrome is another one. Itchy skin, so if you're noticing you're getting rashes or eczema, um, itchy scalp, that's another one. Fungus, like if you're noticing, um, you know, like foot fungus or something like that. So I basically tried things here and there for a while. I got my blood test done, I, I checked my hormone levels, I did, my, I did a hair sample, checked my mineral levels, um, and everything showed that like something was off, but it really didn't bring it all together. So I still had my personal chef business at the time, and as luck or fate would have it, I was contacted by a naturopath named Ann Barak, and she specialized in autoimmune diseases and in Candida. Anne and I quickly became good friends and she basically took me under her wing and taught me all about Candida and how to cook for it. And eventually I was cooking for a lot of her clients in my personal chef business, which was how I became so knowledgeable in how to cook for this diet. So I basically used a combination of supplements, diet, and detox methods. I was taking the vitamins that my blood work showed that I was deficient in. Um, I was taking a green powder called Nano Greens that is really amazing. I actually still take it every morning. It's by BioScientific. Uh, my husband and daughter even love the green powder. It's so good. I was taking um, a magnesium supplement called Calm at night and I actually still take that too. I was drinking red clover tea about twice a day. Um, occasionally I will still do that actually. I also started oil pulling every morning and that's something I still do today. It's basically, it helps pull bacteria that has built up in your mouth overnight. So first thing in the morning when you wake up, like I have a little dish of coconut oil right by my bed. So first thing you put a little teaspoon in your mouth, you swish it around and then for after like five to 10 minutes, you spit it into like an empty jar, swish again with sea salt spit that out and then brush like normal. So basically it's a way to pull out any kind of, um, anything that's been built up in your mouth overnight. Okay, so now onto the diet. So what I loved about Anne's plan, which differed from others that I had seen and tried, was it was a little more flexible. Um, it allowed, you know, berries in moderation, starchy vegetables like squash and carrots and sweet potatoes. And for me, I really liked that because it's more realistic. Um, it helps you stick to it long term. And also I've found that if, you know, when you're on a very strict diet, it can lead to um, disordered eating eventually. So I really loved that it allowed for a lot of variety and it wasn't so strict. It was mainly a lot of vegetables like leafy greens, kale, collards, mustard greens, arugula, spinach, romaine, um, asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, brussels sprouts, um, squashes, sweet potatoes, carrots, rutabaga, turnip. As far as animal protein, it was like fish, so salmon and mahi, beef, all grass-fed um, beef, turkey, lamb, bison, um, beans in small amounts, so maybe like once or twice a week. I believe I, I waited on the beans for about 30 days. Um, Gluten-free grains are okay in small amounts, uh, like quinoa, teff, amaranth. I think I also waited about 30 days for the grains. Seeds are great, all the seeds, and nuts are great too, except for pistachios and cashews. And Berries in small amounts are okay too, about a half a cup a day. And grass-fed butter, which, which you would avoid dairy as a general rule, but grass-fed butter is low in lactose and it's also really uh, a good source of vitamin K and vitamin A, so that's, um, so I did use that. If, if the dairy or the lactose um, bothers you, you could always use ghee or you could just use coconut oil. I have a complete list of the foods to eat and avoid on my website and I'll link that below. And it goes over everything. It has what to eat in the first 30 days, what, to, what you can add in after 60 days, and then after 90 days. And it's printable, it's really nice um, guidelines. So um, I'll link that below for you to use as a resource. So after the first 30 days, I started feeling a lot better. 
And then after 90 days, I felt significantly better. And then I stuck to it loosely for about a good year. And I would say at the year mark was when I started to just feel like myself again. Like I wasn't even thinking about Candida necessarily on a daily basis. Um, and that's what I do now still all these years later. I loosely stick to the diet. I finished a candida diet, this was 2013, now we're 2021, so I haven't had any kind of uh, flare-ups or anything at 38 years old. I had a totally uncomplicated pregnancy, I was able to give a natural childbirth, I was able to breastfeed my daughter with no complications at all. Uh, sometimes if you have a candida issue, you can pass it on to your, um, your babies, so um, I was very grateful that I had all that under control. And I don't feel like I have to stick very strictly to the diet. I mean, it is in the back of my mind. I eat very clean, but it's not like I'm sticking to a candy to cleanse. So um, I'm able to adjust. So for instance, when I was pregnant, I had different dietary needs um, and I was, it was fine. I was able to incorporate a little bit of say cottage cheese and things like that. Um, I did a little bit of gluten then because I was, obviously I was very, um, I had a lot of uh, nausea. Um, so I was able to do like crackers and things like that and that wasn't an issue. In general, I will say that I do eat pretty clean, especially for a chef. We do a lot of the recipes that are on my website. Like I do a lot of um, turkey and kale saute. It's just easy, quick things that are clean. Soups, like I love creamy vegetable soups, beef or turkey chilies. I love fish, so we do a lot of salmon um, with maybe like uh, broccoli on the side or a salad. Um, we'll do rice occasionally. I do shrimp tacos, so I love my paleo uh, cassava flour tortillas. We make those every single week. Uh, my daughter, she actually makes them with me. She loves them. Um, and I will link that recipe below because those are so good. Seaweed, so we do a lot of nori with our meals. Uh, my daughter loves berries, so we always have those in the house. Um, I, if, I, if I'm making a smoothie, I'll put bananas in it now. I'll do like a lot of eggs and spinach or eggs and leftover salad from the night before or um, you know, if I had a cabbage slaw or something. I will do oatmeal. I make that for my daughter a lot and I will usually eat it with her. Um, sometimes I'll do peanut butter. Um, you know, mostly I stick to tahini. But yeah, I, when I bake now, I mostly bake with things like um, coconut sugar, I don't really use the xylitol on a regular basis. Um, I did when I was sticking to the candida diet, I did xylitol and stevia, but now I do more, uh, I'll do raw honey or coconut sugar, sometimes I'll use agave or maple syrup. Oh, I wasn't drinking coffee when I was on the candida diet, but now I drink it. Um, I'll have a cup every morning and um, I make my sugar-free, dairy-free creamer to go with it, and I found a very good quality coffee. It's called Life Boost. It's organic, it's very low acid. I love their coffee. It's a little expensive, but I think it's worth it for the quality of it. I just want you to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Like, you can get through this. You can live a normal life again. You don't have to be stuck feeling like you're isolated, like I felt video was helpful for you. Now don't forget this was my personal experience so obviously we all have our own nutritional needs and um, intolerances and things like that but perhaps this can be useful as like a guideline for you. If you found this helpful and you want to stay tuned, you want to stay connected, be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you are looking for more resources on Candida, if you want some recipes, or if you want to sign up for my five-day Candida Diet Pantry Revamp, I'll link those below. And the Pantry Revamp is really great if you're about to start a Candida Diet because it will take you through your pantry for five days. It will go through each section of your pantry and um, help you uh, take out the things that shouldn't be there if you're gonna start a candida cleanse and give you tips and ideas for how to replace those things. It really sets you up for success. So thank you for watching and I will see you again soon.